I sort of knew from the very beginning uh, that I wanted to do something about motherhood and the complexity of having a child and um, and also all the judgment uh, or, or the judgment there is around you when you become a mother. And I think it's very scary uh, and complex to become a mother. So I thought, what is the worst thing that can happen? You lose your baby. Hi, I'm Julia Fidel. I'm the head of Berlinale series. And today I'm pleased to speak to the creator of Snöengler, Mette Hino, and her lead actress, Josephine Asplund, who plays the role of Jenny. Hi. I'm so glad we're doing this because that gives me the chance to actually meet you. <laughs> <laughs> So I already introduced myself uh, and now I'm very pleased to uh, welcome uh, the two people I'm going to talk to, Mette and Josephine, who have uh, joined me here to talk about their very exciting new series, Snow Angels, Snow Angler. Do I say this right? Yeah. Okay, I'm glad I did. So <laughs> to uh, give everybody the chance to have an idea what we are talking about, can you um, in two, three sentences tell us what is this series about? Uh, it's, um, it's a crime drama or thriller drama uh, about the sudden disappearance of a small infant. Um, and all the characters that are sort of involved or connected to this child or this case. So we see both the policewoman who's uh, trying to find him and the, the child nurse who's been connected to the family. And, um, and then the, the mother and father of Lucas whose stories about what happened the night he disappears uh, don't really match. So it's um, sort of a, a very, or, a bit complex uh, character-based crime story, uh, yeah, with the sort of the, the engine of a, a child that's missing. Salle, var du ställt barnvagnen någonstans? Nej, vad sa de? Så frågar de om det var mig. Vagnen, vad fan har du ställt Lukas? Vad snackar de om? Vadå var det Lukas? Var det? Är han inte med dig? Nej. Skulle han inte här? Nej, han är inte här. Jag trodde han var med dig. Nej. Han var ju hemma för guds skull. Han... Vad fan snackar du? Det är klart att han är hemma. Vad fan snackar du om? Nej. Jag, jag trodde han var med dig. Nej, han är här. Vad skojar du? Jag skulle vara lyck. Jag trodde han var med dig. Han var inte med mig. Han var ju här. Vad var det Lukas? Jag vet, jag vet inte, jag vet inte. Jag har sagt att du låser den fucking dörren. Jag låser dörren, jag lovar att jag låser dörren. Jag... Jag vet att jag låser dörren. Eskling. Jag låser Eskling, dörren, titta jag vet inte. Titta på mig, var det Lukas? Jag vet inte. Vadå, jag vet jag inte. Jag vet inte. Eskling, han var ju här. Jag lämnade den här lägenheten, han var här. Eskling, han var här. Han var ju här. Josephine, can you explain a little bit about the role of, of Jenny? I think she's, she struggles with being a good mother. To her, it's... She finds it so hard breastfeeding her own child. She doesn't know what to do when she, her child is, is yelling. Um, she's longing for something else. She's missing her old life with Salle. And I think the whole thing and also what drew me to her as a character is that, you know, all, all these expectations that we have on parents and on mothers, uh, especially, she just doesn't know how to live up with them. And she completely feels judged from the out, outside. Um, and she finds comfort in her sedatives. And that's how she sort of escapes reality. Um, she's trying to escape responsibility and reality until she can't anymore. Jag minns inte. Försök. Vad kan du ha ställt barnvagnen? Vad brukar du gå någonstans? Jag har inte gjort något. 
Okej. Okay. Men om vi ska ha någon chans att hitta Lukas vid liv så måste du hjälpa oss nu. Vågpatrullen är på plats. Tack. Jag behöver något som är Lukas. Som luktar Lukas. Ja, yeah, um, we were already talking about like, the, the complexity of the story or you mentioned it. And it has um, a strong ensemble of different characters who are all interwoven into this story. And uh, I was wondering uh, what the starting point was. You know, where, where did the story begin for you and how did the other parts then, then come together? Um, I sort of knew from the very beginning uh, that I wanted to do something about motherhood and the complexity of having a child and um, and also all the judgment uh, or, or the judgment there is around you when you become a mother like society your own mother your friends uh, yourself um, um, how you can judge yourself when you become a mother um, and uh, and I think it's very scary uh, and complex to become a mother. So I thought, what is the worst thing that can happen? You lose your baby. When I storylined the first episode, I sort of got bored when I thought about writing episode two and three, because I don't normally do crime and I'm not into the, the traditional uh, police work and suspense and, uh, oh, what happened to the baby and let's find him. and stuff like that and I was so intrigued by the characters that were created in this world uh, that I wanted to know what happened before like I was like I, I was so interested in their backstory and their background and how we could shift perspective of, of who we think is guilty and, and maybe they have a different story or, so I decided to write episode two and three as backstory to episode one. So I, I, I put it like in the middle of a room. I actually wrote it down, I storylined it. And then I put it in the middle of the room and said, this is like, the it, 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 this is the first episode, but if you write it straight forward, it's the middle of the story. And then I wrote episode one and two, and then I wrote like the rest. So it, it was like uh, something coming together uh, in, in one piece. In contrast to other art forms, and even more so than with film, making a series is a highly collaborative process. And um, so when we talk about um, aesthetics, who were your strongest allies in making the series and also in fulfilling your vision with it? Uh, it, was, it was definitely um, the director, Anna Sakrisson. Uh, she directed all six episodes and she had um, a very uh, strong visual identity from the very beginning and she uh, I think she she did an amazing job because she did all six episodes it sort of feels like it's a, a very developed story and, and and like all the aesthetics is um, very well thought of and um, I think we had a, a an amazing um, collaboration um, and and then um, well of course the, at the very beginning before I met her it was the SVT the network that really showed a lot of trust into the story and and really uh, were very respectful when giving the notes I think it was a, a very good process because they both gave like uh, trust and time and money and I think that's like, if you have that, then you, then you feel like you can do anything, basically. I don't think I could have done this, this character and this story without Anna, the director, yeah. and Ardalan, who plays my husband. It's, they've both been such a great support because um, it hasn't been an easy project. I mean, it, it's a very heavy, heavy story, heavy scenes. Um, our characters, I mean, it's not, yeah, it hasn't been easy. And and I don't know if I could have been able to, to do it without Anna and, and without Ardalan, honestly, because um, they've been great support throughout the whole series, 100%. Cool. 
Well, um, so when you first heard about this role um, of Yeni, uh, what was your, like you, I guess you read it, and then what was your, what was your entry point to her? What was, uh, wh where did you relate to her the most? And what was maybe, wh were there parts that you were worried about or afraid of? Or, you know, what was your biggest challenge there? I mean, when I first read the script, I immediately felt that I'm, I have to do this. <laughs> it's, it's very rare that some projects that comes along, you feel like I, I just have to do this. Uh, it's, it's meant for me. And that's what I felt when I read the first episode. Um, and also knowing what people were around it um, made me even more you know, excited about the whole project. But also I felt just after reading one episode that I completely understood Yeni um, almost immediately. Like I, I felt I, that I, I, I know her and I know I just I felt that I understood her. I, I can't tell how or or why, but but I also I mean th this has been very personal to me because I think that throughout my whole childhood I've seen so many Yenis. Um, a lot of my classmates, parents were just like Yeni and and Salet. So while doing this project, um, a lot of childhood memories came back to me and a lot of situations where when I was a kid and seeing different things and, um, you know, seeing what Nicole in this series is going through. And it just reminded me a lot about my own childhood. There might be um, people who watch this who don't relate or who would normally not relate to her character based on, you know, being in a different social class or whatever. And I had the feeling that with the extreme honesty and all of these layered elements that these characters have, there is, you kind of took away all the preconceptions that people have looking at this story and uh, so the question is was this something that was on your mind constantly or was this yeah was this a, a factor that you were thinking of a lot to me it's very important that there are no villains in this story and that 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 when we sort of we have this uh, we're a bit preju prejudiced sometimes or at least i can be and, uh, and I tried with the portraits of these women and uh, of course, especially with the Emmy, that when we start some, we start, we have a starting point and that's like, uh, this, is, this is the woman, we think there's something wrong with her. And, and by, by giving her a backstory and by going two months back in time to episode two, you sort of, you sort of get to know her in a way that you start to relate to her and that, and, and that you, that um, that her likability also changes a lot because you identify with her at a lot of points. And I think that's important that we do that with all the characters. One of the first questions uh, that I got asked after the program was released was, oh, um, this one, is it a Scandi Noir? And uh, I was laughing a bit about it, uh, but of course it's an obvious question, um, you know, and uh, so my question is, because I think it's kind of a blessing and a curse at the same time, because it's this strong label. And uh, so how do you see yourself in this, you know, tradition of Scani Noir? I don't see myself at all in this tradition. <laughs> I, I don't like labels like that. I think it's hard to work with the labels and the... Uh, it sort of give you an expectation that's that the things have to be a certain way and i don't think this show is a certain way because i think it's also a relationship drama and it's a family story and it's a um, love story and uh, and i know that there's a, a very strong engine of, of a, a child that's missing and that could put it in in that genre and also the tonality, of course. But I sometimes wonder what is a Scandic Noir? Yeah. I, I think that it's it's used so much more outside of Scandinavia that we Scandinavians, we don't even know anymore because we don't call our own show Scandi Noir. So yeah. I, I, I just, I, no, I, I, I wouldn't yeah. know. 
But there is one trend that I definitely noticed um, regarding Scandinavian series and uh, that is um, the level of nuance and freedom of um, the description or the depiction of female characters. Why do you think the most progressive female characters come from Scandinavia <laughs> and from Scandinavian writers as you are one? And how, what can the rest of Europe learn? <laughs> so, please help us. <laughs> oh, I don't know. That's a very hard question. <laughs> because I think there's so much talent out there and I think there's so many uh, people that, that can write these characters and that really want to do it. So it's, uh, I think it's a question about uh, the, the people that actually air the shows, that they should be brave. And I think SVT are brave and I think DR are brave. I see in your background, your very busy wall. So the question comes naturally, what are <laughs> your plans for the near future? Uh, are there any future projects lined up? Uh, I'm working right now, I'm working on a new DR series uh, about, yeah, it's a, it's a story about uh, 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 the invention of the electric curler, which is actually a Danish invention. You know, the, the, the electric, it was a Danish thing called Kam curlers. And a guy invented that and uh, and no one wanted to work in his little stupid factory. So he, he started with two people in the 63. And then uh, a couple of years later, there were 3,500 women working on the factory. And there was it was uh, women who had never made their own money before and they'd never been out of their house. And uh, so that's the, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a very big thing. I do have um, a few things ahead. Uh, hopefully I get to do this movie jump in the Canary Islands if COVID doesn't fuck it up for a 15th time. Very good. Well, thank you so much uh, for talking uh, about your show with me. I am really, really excited that uh, Snow Angels is part of this program. And thank you so much for this wonderful series and all the best to you. Bye bye. Bye. Bye.